we got we got to see here. We're gonna we're gonna find out right now, on frame, what these do. Okay, one. Well, like so many of you, I too, the day it was released, dropped two hundred and thirty dollars on Leatherman's most expensive production multi-tool to date, the Leatherman Arc. We are gonna do a ton of testing, including the dreaded coat hanger test against these cutters to see if they shatter and break. We'll find out a little bit later, but we're also going to unpack the Magna Cut blade, which is really what the other big main thing that so many people have been curious about, wondering about. I have six different Leatherman tools on the table that we're gonna break down and kind of run alongside throughout this video. So I'm so glad you're hanging out with me today. I'm Aaron, this is Gideon's Tactical. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Now I wanna address the first major rub that a lot of us have, which is the $230 price point. I mean, that's at least $100 more than the Leatherman Wave, and it's based off of free technology, meaning the technology on the P2, the P4 series that uses magnets, to make it a lot easier and quicker to disengage and the magnets hold it together. And there's not, if you're familiar with Leathermans, there's actually not a lot, you know, to like write home about here. Now with most three te free technology, all the tools can be accessed basically one-handed. So you just push down, you kick up a group, and then you pick the tool you want and you go from there. I think these two attributes are gonna put some perspective on that price and I know it's gonna piss some people off, so I just can't wait to see all the comments on, on what's gonna happen. The plier head is first. You see how it says USA right there? If you look at the majority, if you're already on a Leatherman, my Super Tool 300, there's no USA on the plier head. My Bond, no USA. My Wave, my Charge, my Skeletool, my Surge, none of them say USA on the plier head. I, I can't remember if the Free Series does. Apparently, even though Leathermans are assembled and most of the parts come from America, Apparently the plier head is not fully sourced in America. And so they can't put that USA on the majority of their tools, but they can on this because it is sourced in America. So that obviously does bring up the price. We, we all want USA made stuff. Well, it's gonna cost us more. And then of course the USA made Magna Cut blade. And we'll talk performance here in just a moment, but for material sake and just kind of concept, think of any pocket knife, right? Here's an American made Gerber Savvy with 20 CV steel crossbar lock. It's a good blade. I like it. Aluminum handle scales, $200. $30 less than this. And all it is is a cutting blade. That's it. Then if we look at an Italian made Ace Giant Mouse, this is under three inch blade, L Max Steel, Liner Lock, Micarta. It's a great fit and finish. Excellent little blade, $215. It's just a pocket knife, 215 bucks right there. Then if we look at Magna Cut fixed blades, Here's a Reef Knives F4, video coming later in the week on this knife and the Scanny version in 3V, but the Magna Cut version is gonna be like 3, 345, 350, I think, on average. And, you know, it's not a huge blade in comparison. Uh, and then a TJ Schwartz Overland, Magna Cut, right there, $300. $300 for this knife, Kydex sheet, made in America. Boom, no moving parts. You know, it's just, uh, I mean, there's obviously good quality there, but I mean, there's not a lot of work that needs to go into a design like that here's the montana knife company speed goat in magna cut paracord wrap handle kydex sheath 225 dollars basically the same price basically the same price made in america and all it is a hunk of metal with some rope on it and a kydex sheath so i mean at 230 dollars obviously we're gonna have to determine as we unpack the rest of this tool does it make sense but when you actually start looking at like just high-end pocket knives i was even say medium pocket knives uh, in this day and age and decent fixed blades with my Agna cut, they're all gonna be the same price or more than what this multi-layered, multi-tooled, American-made arc has. So I'm not justifying the price, I'm just saying we need to keep some realistic perspective as we unpack the rest of the tool. Now with that out of the way, the blade is going to have a cutting edge of two and a half inches, got that sheep's foot design, little swedging right there. And you really just try to put it through the ringer. Did a paper test at the beginning. We're about to do a paper test here in just a moment, uh, just to see how the Magna Cut is holding its edge. And I, I was really pleased with just how it operated, how it functioned, general utility. You know, sure, three inches would be better. I like like a three inch blade is kind of more my preference usually. Um, but it you know is definitely gonna go through cardboard, go through rope. If you were using this on a hiking trip, camping trip, you could definitely make a feather stick if you had to. You know, you're using it on the job site to go through heavy duty material and cordage, or you're just a hobbyist in your garage. 
the tool is going to accomplish a lot of tasks and it just has a very uh, uh, gentle is the word that comes to mind gentle design because of the way that sh uh the tip is definitely good enough to pierce but you know not like overly aggressive now let's go ahead and do the paper test here real quick yeah so after all the use no issues all the way down that was i think that was my mistake some of the guys yep nice smooth cut okay so no issues there now i will tell you purely from an aesthetic point of view i actually like the blade shape on my leatherman charge in g10 this is a charge plus they no longer make these bad move on leatherman's part love to see those come back in some iteration but uh, i actually like the blade profile a little bit more and this is s30v the magna cut compared to the s30v you know is going to be tougher uh, won't, uh, S30V holds a good edge, but it can be a little brittle sometimes. This will be more durable, and go watch my TRC review on Magna Cut. Uh, that was a, a insanely easy to resharpen, and I'm finding that I just really enjoy the Magna Cut. That thumb stud, in conjunction with the speed of deployment, means that this is the fastest deploying Leatherman tool I own. Of all the Leatherman tools, this is the quickest because you can just bam, hit that thing, and then you pull back and release the spine lock and whip and close. So it operates and functions like basically most of your crossbar and or access lock, like bench maids and other, you know, blades that are starting to use that and feels like a pocket knife to make you feel even more and more like you can eliminate carrying a pocket knife and just carry this as your like one EDC tool. So that is something to be said, for the price, you kind of can eliminate needing to pick up another pocket knife and run in tandem with your standard Leatherman because of not only the Magna Cut steel, but the way the thumb stud and locking mechanism function together. Now, as we continue to dissect the arc to figure out how does it stack up compared to other Leatherman tools in general, and is it worth throwing in our personal rotations and usage, I wanna let you know about Huckberry and they are today's sponsor because they're an excellent distributor to pick up your next Leatherman tool through. And what makes picking up gear through this American-based business an excellent choice is not only do you have the opportunity if you're wanting to gift a Skeletool or a rebar to a friend or family member this holiday season, or you're wanting to score a Wave Plus or say a Charge Plus for yourself, they have an excellent selection of Leatherman tools to choose from. And stack onto that my exclusive 10% off promo code you can apply towards your very first purchase over on the Huckberry website towards your Leatherman tools or tons of other gear and equipment that Huckberry carries. And then for whatever reason, if that Leatherman tool or other piece of gear and equipment just doesn't pan out, they have free returns for US customers. So there'll be a link in the description below this video over to the Huckberry website so you can explore all the different gear and equipment that they carry. And that exclusive promo code will be included in the description below as well. So I invite you to hop on over and check out all they have to offer. Now to the moment we've all been waiting for, pliers, durability, 230 bucks. Who gives a riff about all the other tools in the Magna Cut? If these pliers don't hold up, what's the point, right? I mean, just get a Magna Cut pocket knife, I guess, if that's the real deal. So before we do that, I want to give a quick shout out to Zeb Gibson. He was messaging me about he had bought one and was seeing a lot of flex in the body. So I just want to show you guys here. When I push on this, that is that is quite a bit of flex, just up and down. Now, when I do that, I'm going to use my surge. Where's my surge at? Just to give us some perspective here. This is like, you know, obviously the monster. I mean, we're definitely getting some flex too. I would say the, the arc is doing more right there. But we're definitely getting a little flex there. I'll use the wave because, I mean, so many of us have the wave, right? So let's just see here. I mean, some... I would say it's about the same as the wave probably maybe ever so slightly more but that's not really an issue one thing and i believe i remember seeing this on my free p4 so i think they're the same check out this flex side i'm just hopefully you guys are going to be able to pick this up on frame let's see these flex quite a bit side there we go let's see there it is side to side there it is right there side to side flex I mean, that's quite a bit. And I think it's just the way the pivots are and all that free technology, because when we do that, what, can we do that with the wave? Let's see. Yeah, you're just, I mean, that's it. I'm doing like as far as I can. I mean, hardly any flex right there on the wave. So the, the I believe it, it's partly just the free technology, the way that they've designed the pivots and stuff that you're definitely going to have a lot more flex and you're definitely going to have some more, you know, compression when you squeeze. 
I, I haven't seen any issues as of yet. And obviously the P4 and P2 have been pretty popular. Um, and leave a comment below if your P series doesn't flex as much as what you just saw there. Then we got the wire crimpers back here. We got the needle nose, that all works great. The cutters, which are replaceable. And I do have a set of replace, replaceable teeth right there. Um, now I went through like some braided cable wire, cut through that fine. I went through some uh, 12 gauge galvan, or excuse me, 12 gauge braided copper wire, as well as 16 gauge um, galvanized wire. It, it all did fine. And I mean, I believe that most of us are gonna be encountering that type of stuff, but coat hangers apparently, and I just went to Amazon, just picked up, you know, like just bought some coat hangers. I don't normally have these around. So these are um, 14 gauge coat hangers. Okay, one. And I'm going all the way back there into the pivot. And there is a gap. Now, maybe mine are too small. I don't know. Let me know, guys, if you're doing a different gauge wire. I just went to Amazon, just found whatever I could find. Me. I'm going to do like four. There it is. Okay, so... I can't remember that was that was either three or four let's just look sorry i was just having to inspect with a flashlight making sure i didn't see any fractures okay no no damage on the 14 gauge wire hanger no damage no cracking no fracturing or chipping or rolling from what i can tell functions no problem now i'm a little curious if i maybe bought like ultra thin hangers again i just randomly ordered them uh, so I bought, I grabbed one from my closet here that is like 11 gauge. It's 2.9 millimeters in diameter, whereas those are like 1.9 millimeters in diameter. So I, I figured let's just see for one last run. But I mean, at least with those, it's not having any problem. There's no issue here, but let's just find out. I mean, th this looks like pretty thick i don't i don't even know but we just gotta right we gotta know that's why we're doing this yeah that's that's too thick man okay so there's two marks right there i can't get through it <laughs> but so this must be like an extra thick one, but it's still not breaking it. So let's just try one more. Yeah, it won't go all the way through no matter what I do. You can see it goes all the way through. Let's just double check here. Yo. Okay, yeah, it do ha doesn't seem to have offset the head in any way. It's yeah. I'm not seeing any. Sorry, just really having to look through it. Okay, so there, there it was. I've tried to go through it three times. You saw how hard I was pressing on it. And I'm not seeing any fracturing. And I mean, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. The head is not like gone crooked or something. So it couldn't, I couldn't get it to go all the way through, but we did tons with the um, 14 gauge wire there. Uh, it's 11, it wasn't quite able to go through. So. What I would say, at least in my from my model, it's not getting damaged. So either there's a bad heat treatment slash bad batch floating around um, out there that a lot of people got initially. Hopefully it's a, just a fluke, um, you know, or I don't even know. My, your miles may vary. There's something weird with my two sets of coat hangers. I don't know. So, but mine has held up. That is a good thing. I'm glad I don't have to replace the, the teeth you know, or hit up Leatherman, go through warranty and all that other stuff. So at least on my model, but I, we got to see comments, throw down comments. If you own one of these, have you damaged your teeth? We got to know, or have you done some cutting through decent thickness gauged wire without any problems like coat hangers? Got to know, leave comments. That's really going to be the determining factor. And over time, we will see if this is like a faulty design, bad manufacturing, or just a bad batch that occurred with some that came out right out of the gate with the arcs cutters so now having experienced all that and thankfully again those cutters at least on my model uh seem to be working your mileage again may vary 
how do I feel about the arc? Has it retired like the wave plus and the charge plus for me? Is this now like my one stop shop? Is it worth picking up? Is it not? Final thoughts now having thrown down all that money. Where do I say with the tool? If you are like, I am just wanting that one stop shop, man. This will feel like a large pocket knife with all the extra features of a full size, if you will, multi tool. With that said, uh, there's one aspect that I wasn't super fond of that I haven't addressed yet, and it's the ergonomics, particularly down here when you're using the knife on the arc. It's super thin. Now, all multi-tools are not super ergonomic. It's all these angles and stuff. But these are just very thin on both sides right here, where that black is. Hopefully, you can see it. There we go. The light. Right there. It's really thin. And so when I'm gripping it and I'm doing a push cut, it's eating up my palm right here and my right, not my palm, excuse me, my, my fingers right there. I can definitely feel it. It's just not quite as ergonomic as I would prefer. Or if you're using like the saw, now when you're using the pliers and bearing down all that stuff, you know, those are all rounded and contoured and that's great. But I found that on the wave, when I, whoops, deploy the blade, the, you have this raised rounded part ever so slightly. You still got that pretty thin, you know, piece of metal right there, but it just feels more organic to me not quite as sharp and abrupt. And I can do a lot more cuts for a longer period of time because of the ergonomics on the wave. And then don't even get me started on the G10 version of the charge. That is even more so because it's G10, it's slightly more pronounced and thicker right there. I mean, it feels fantastic and I can definitely cut much longer and it doesn't feel sharp or harsh on all four transitions like the arc does. So that is a downer for me in the ergonomic realm and I'm just going to be honest with you. If I was going to go do a bunch of work, I needed my dedicated multi-tool, which in the past has been my charge plus, would I, now is it retired for the arc? No. Nope. Nope. I like the, the charge more. Maybe I'm just old school. Maybe it's because I have this limited, you know, G10, but I use this serrated blade with the cut, with the hook all the time. I use it all the time. I love the blade shape and the S30V still holds a really good edge. You know, yes, I can't flick it open. I got to do that, you know, manual stuff but it, it just gets done everything that I want. It's going to be slightly lighter, not by much, but you know, it's going to be slightly lighter and just a package that I know that I love and some of the abruptness and just some of the tools that are on the arc. I don't use as much as the tools that are on the charge plus. So that's my mileage guys. It's not a bad tool, but you really got to think about the investment and whether or not it's the right tool for you. And you don't mind that flexing and some of the things that we have addressed today. Appreciate you guys coming over, hanging out with me. Check out the other video popping up. Leave comments. I look forward to the huge discussion we're about to have. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. I'll see you out there.